Hey folks, David here on the Vintage Future, and I just really quickly wanted to show you what I know about how to use a Brannock device. This device is really important because you can get Brannock charts online, but where that becomes erroneous is one, they don't really help you get your arch length, which in many cases is much more important than the overall length of your foot. And in addition to that, often people measure at the wrong angle and you have really no way of knowing if you're measuring at the right angle, especially for your width. Length is a little more straightforward, but measuring for your width is often very problematic without this device. And so this is kind of like, like anything that's a standard, like a ruler, a tape measure, a compass. Uh, this is the standard and it's a static device. In other words, like you can't like bend this or anything, it's metal. And so you really wanna use the device, not the chart. Okay, let me tell you how it's used, and then I'll kinda of show you that, and I'll let you know how it relates to the foot using the boot and my own foot. So here we go. Okay, so first of all, there's a few features to this. Um, this one's the combo you can use for men and women because there's different sizing gradations for both men and women, in the US at least. So there's just a couple features here. One, overall length, which is as simple as placing your heel here, right heel, or you flip it around and use the left heel. And wherever your foot ends up, um, you know, I'm, I'm a man, right? And so I would just find that marker. I'm actually a 10 overall length. So my toes end up there. You put your heel nice and snug into this pocket and you see where it ends up. That's your overall length. That's one thing. The next thing is your arch length. With your foot there, and you really wanna do this standing. There's some debate on that, but standing is best because that's when your foot's its biggest. Um, unless you have some special footwear that has like orthotics or a really pronounced arch support, in which case you can do it standing and sitting or sometimes at a diagonal. Like if you go to Nick's Boots into their actual shop, they'll have you do it with your foot at a diagonal because they're trying to compensate for that arch support. But for most boots, you wanna be standing, especially if it's flat inside that boot. So that's the first feature is overall length. The next, which as I said, is basically the most important is your arch length, otherwise known as your heel to ball length, which is heel to the ball of your foot. You basically just put your foot in here and you slide this until it's resting right at the middle of the ball of your foot. And then whatever size here it shows is your arch length. And that's important because that's telling you where your foot wants to flex. And I'll show you that in just a minute here. But you don't want something that's trying to flex at a point where your foot doesn't want to flex. And so, in many cases, this arch length trumps, it supersedes what your overall length is. So for instance, my overall length is a 10C, but my arch length is a 10 and a half. What that means is that my foot wants to flex and bend where a 10 and a half size foot would flex and bend, not where a 10 size foot would. Some people have a discrepancy between the two that's like a size or size and a half. And so in their cases, it's very important. You definitely don't want to have like feet that measure a size 12 overall length, your heel to toe, and then it, they measure as a size 14 heel to ball arch length, and you keep trying to wear a size 12 because then the shoe keeps trying to get your foot, your foot to flex in places where it doesn't want to flex. So ball alignment is really important. So those are the first two. And the last one is your width, which is with this slider. Once your foot is in place, you just simply slide the slider to where it needs to be. So let me show you how that works and I'll show you how it corresponds with your foot and this boot over here. So I'm gonna set this right here so you can kind of see what's going on more or less. And here we go. Okay, so this is my right foot. I'm gonna place my right foot in the Brannock device. Um, I'm gonna move this out of the way for a second just for kicks to show you. So I'm nice and snug in here. You don't wanna like go all crazy, but you don't wanna be up here. So nice and snug in that, that heel pocket that it provides for you there. And then the next thing you want to do is get this ball aligned. And you want to put all your weight on that foot. So I'm, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm got all my weight on that foot. And what that's going to do is going to make sure that your foot splays out as far as it would go. Because I don't really have an arch, but if you had an arch, imagine I had an arch. You know, it's like, like this, right? And then that's when I'm sitting. Well, what happens when you stand? It collapses, right? And then your feet, your feet go out as far as they're gonna go. So that's what you're looking for. So just get all your weight on that foot. Make sure the weight of your body's on that foot. And then you slide this to the middle of your ball. For reference, um, to get this out of the way, 
this is the ball, this like big knuckle right here, where your foot wants to bend, okay? And that's what you're trying to measure for, right? Because let's, let's face it, that's where you want to bend, right? My foot bends there. My foot doesn't want to bend here. My foot doesn't want to bend here. My foot wants to bend right here. So you're trying to figure out where does my foot bend? Because I want to match that to a shoe or a boot that wants to bend in that same spot. People don't recognize the importance of this when they wear sneakers a lot because basically two reasons. One, a sneaker has usually really soft material at the toe. So whereas this somewhat thick leather, if it's rubbing my toe, it's really gonna bug me. And if my toes are running into it, it's gonna cause joint pain. If it's like a cloth sneaker, I'm not really gonna notice that. And then the other reason is usually sneakers are so flexible that even if your foot wants to flex at a place where the, the shoe isn't naturally flexing, the overall shoe is so soft that it's just gonna flex anyways. Like you, you will change the shoe to do what you want it to do. Um, so that is usually not realized. But when you try to get a boot like this, I mean, check this thing out. I just wanna show you this. Um, I chose this particular boot because this is particularly robust. You see this right here, how thick this midsole is? Not all my boots are like this, but if I try to bend this, like, oh my goodness, it does not want to bend. Imagine me wearing the wrong size. If I'm trying to bend the boot here, like this is not going to give. If I'm trying to bend the boot here, it's not going to give. This has one flex point and one flex point only, and that's right here where it's designed to be. So I want my ball to be lined up with that place on the boot where it wants to flex, and if I don't, this boot is probably going to damage my foot. It might take some time, it's not gonna happen overnight, but if you wear this for six months or a year or 10 years, and you're trying to flex a boot here where it doesn't wanna flex or here, you're gonna hurt yourself. I've actually done that before, so I speak with experience. I've totally hurt the ball of my foot, this joint, by wearing boots that were too small. So we're trying to line this up so that this flexes right where my foot wants to flex. So that's why this arch length is super important. So I care about overall length, but I mainly care about arch length. Okay, so let's get back to it. I'm gonna put this right here where it belongs. Okay, so when I'm looking down, what I see is with my heel snug in this heel pocket, I'm a 10 overall. With all my weight on my foot, I'm a 10 overall. But when I look at this, it's showing me that I'm a 10 and a half according to my ball length. That means my foot wants to bend where a 10 and a half size foot wants to bend. So then the last thing you do once this is all in place is you slide the width slider over and I'm gonna read it. It says that with my foot the way it is, if I'm a 10 and a half, that puts me in a C width category. Let me show you how that works. So with the ball, as I said, it's you, you go like this and you match it to the length uh, or to your ball and it'll tell you what length you are, which mine was like literally right here, which is this line, the line right between the 10 and the 11 in the blue area. That's a 10 and a half. Okay. So I'm a 10 and a half. And then you slide this slider, right? And you find 10 and a half. So look right here. There's a 10 and 11. The line right between that is 10 and a half. And what, what width is it? It's, it's right between a C and a D, which means I'm a C width, almost a D width, right? So if you keep looking at that line, the little line that's right between the 10 and 11, if I were to move that like this, that'd be right on the C. Or if I move it down further, like if my foot was narrower, now we're like in the B territory. Or if I was up here, look at that line between the 10 and 11. If I put it right on the D, that would mean I was a D width. But if I put my foot here, as you saw, and I move the slider to touch my foot, snug but not pushing into it really tight, um, it showed that I was like three quarters of the way between the C and the D, which means I'm a solid C width, almost a D width. So sometimes I'll even go off a D, a D width. Um, Cause you know, you gotta account for like your socks and stuff or like the fact that your foot swells throughout the day. On a cold morning especially, you know, your foot is a bit smaller than it is the rest of the day, but if you, stay on your feet and it's hot outside, your foot could swell. Um, it could even swell a whole width. And so I'm close to a D. Sometimes I just say I'm a D. When you go into the store, just think of it as like the next width up and you're fine. 
because uh, typically, you know, in many cases, the boot won't necessarily stretch out for you the way you want. You want it to be comfortable from the first wear. You don't want it way big, obviously, but anyway, so that's that. This overall length, arch length, and the width slider. And as you can see, all these, all these things are not going to be achievable if you just have the Brannock chart. And so when I go to get a boot, such as this boot right here, then I can make sure everything's correct. I can make sure that the width is correct, right? I can make sure there's not way too wide or like so narrow that it's squeezing my foot. I can make sure that it's gonna flex where my foot wants to flex. And I can make sure that the overall length is right. There's some weird situations like sometimes your, your uh, overall length is like way longer than your arch length. In that case, you need to seek professional help or someone that has a lot more experience than me. But most people, they might be equal or their, their arch length is a bit longer than their overall length. And in that case, it's really easy. You just go off the arch length. So that's that. I hope this helped. I hope this video helps you find boots that fit you much better than maybe they have in the past, or at least helps you understand why the boots that you have that fit fit so well. And I hope this helps you make less mistakes. You're basically just getting your Brannock device and then you're finding what the manufacturer recommends to get based off that. So like a Grant Stone, they're gonna say, we recommend going a half size down from that Brannock measurement. And if you do that, we are saying that your flex point is gonna be correct. Your ball alignment right here your ball alignment right here is gonna be correct. That's what they're trying to guarantee you. And so you just find that manufacturer's Brannock information like, hey, how do I size based off the Brannock device to get that right ball alignment? And in my opinion, if a company doesn't list that or does not give you that information after you contact them, that's not necessarily a company you shouldn't buy from, but I would be wary of buying from them and I would never buy from them if they don't have a good exchange policy or return policy. But a lot of companies will, even a lot of these sneaker companies or athletic shoes, if you email them about the Brannock, they will email you back and tell you, even if it's not listed on the website. I've done that for a variety of brands for my wife in the past. Uh, but if they don't, you just need to make sure that you can test it yourself. And one good way to do that is you get the boot or the shoe and new, and you just try to flex it on your own and wherever it wants to flex, you know, that's kind of like its natural flex point. And you just kind of go from there and, and try to match it up with your foot. But yeah, hopefully that just kind of demystified things and simplified them. That's how you use a branding device. That's how we use it to size boots and shoes. And as I always say, let your boots take you to places more important than the boots themselves. We'll see you next time.